This is MikeBot. Welcome back to a new QForge video. I'm going to be doing a long requested full walkthrough video. Now, when I say full, I don't mean full full. It's not every step of the way. It's just a really quick rundown. If you want to see a full full video, which is going to be about 30 minutes, leave your comments below. So I'm just going to look for a photo here. And then I'm going to find, take that photo, download it, import it into QForge. And then we'll proceed from there. Uh, by the way, I have recorded this video already and I'm just doing a voiceover on it. So I'm going to try to do this as accurately as possible. So the photo has been downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and open it here and then load the file into HueForge. So once again with HueForge, you got to play with the sliders. The sliders are the layers. You import the colors to the slider by dragging them from your PLA screen or the color screen on the left hand side there drag them down to the slider and you want to play with the brightness compensation which is on the right hand side so right now i'm just importing my colors black green and brown that's what i ended up going with and then i'm going to play with the brightness and find the correct brightness that looks perfect for this photo so i'm basically just going to play around with the sliders like i have in all the other videos until I find the right layer height for the right colors. And then I'm going to throw in some brown just to make it pop a little bit more. So once again, I only went with three colors for this one. It was black, green, and brown. I will fast forward through the process because it took me about 30 minutes to actually do it. And I know it's going to be boring for everyone to watch. So once again, brightness compensation, play with that, then play with your colors and then on the slider screen, Start sliding each color up and down slowly until you find the right combination that works for you. So I'm just fast forwarding through the entire video here and should be done any second. So here is my final project right about here. So now I'm going to export the project. So I got to save the project first by going file, save project, and then I'm going to go file, export STL. And as you can see, it's currently set to 225 height by 150 width. And that's at the bottom uh, middle of the screen. I'm going to just adjust it here because it's a little too large and I want this video to be quick. I don't want to wait four hours. I want to get this video out to everybody so you have something to do on the weekend with the Hueforge software. So I've adjusted the size and now it's exported. Now I'm opening up Bamboo Studio here. So I'm going to import the file right now. So uh, initially I imported the wrong file, so then you're going to see two files temporarily, but the smaller one is the one we're working with for this project. So once the file has been imported, then you need to start playing with your settings in Bamboo Studio. If you want to see a video on that, just uh, mention it in the comments. So I'm going to print this on my X1C using the cool plate, and then I'm going to sync my AMS color, so I need to go and select my uh, X1C. Set the uh, flushing volumes for this. I'm not too concerned because it's going to be like 20 grams of filament. So I sync it all up and I need to obviously add green to this mixture. I have the black, I have the brown, but I'm missing the green. So I'm setting it on the first uh, slot of my AMS one. So back at HueForge, you go to describe to get your uh, swap instructions. So it's brown to layer two, black to layer seven, then green for the rest. I do have a HueForge profile that I created in Bamboo Studio. If you want me to make a video on how to set that profile, leave a comment below as well. So start by slicing your plate once you have your main color. To change the color on the file, you right click and then you click change filament and select the color. So you're going to see me do that in a second here because green was not the first uh, layer I wanted. It was brown actually. So I'm going to go back to prepare. In just a second here. And then you're going to see what I'm talking about. Oh, I didn't do that actually. So what I did was I just changed slot one to be uh, brown, I believe. Nope, there we go. So right click, change filament, brown. Slice it. Once it's sliced, I go to the slider. And I'm going to set the first two layers to brown. So once I get to layer two, I'm going to right click and change filament to black. So once it's changed to black... Uh, that's that layer seven, you right click, change filament again, and then I'm going to select green. And then there's all three layers that I need. Make sure your prime tower is not touching the picture. I've had failed prints because of that. So make sure you move around your prime tower. You do need to use a prime tower for those that are wondering. 
So I'm just going to name the file. It's only going to take an hour and 17 minutes and 15 grams of filament. And then I'm going to send it off to my uh, printers. It's very quick. X1C's networking is amazing, unlike the P1P, which is sluggish and slow. So that's basically it. The file has been created. The file has been sliced. I've set all the right layer changes. If you don't have an AMS unit, you can also do this manually by hand. A little bit more painful, but it is doable. So over to my X1C, there's my file. I'm selecting it, make sure all the right colors are there. And then I'm going to hit print now. So the X1 Carbon has a LiDAR, so it's about a 7 to 10 minute startup process. So it's just going to do its thing here. And now I'm just going to fast forward and you can see the first layer going down. The Bamboo X1C is amazing, my favorite printer by far. P1P is great, but I do like the X1C just a little bit more because everything is perfect with it thanks to that LiDAR system. So there's the first layer going down again. Perfect clean first layer. You gotta love it. So in just a second here, you're gonna see about layer seven. So this is the black going down. Once again, I fast forwarded through all of this to make the video short and sweet for everybody. Look at this thing, it's a beast. Tire friggin' thing shakes. I do have the anti-vibration feet on it as well. So the desk doesn't shake, just the printer and it has the compensation built in for that. So here's the finished print. Beautiful, came out exactly as I designed it. I haven't taken it off the plate here. You're going to see that in just a second at the end. But you can see it's perfect. The depth is exactly what I set it to. Refer back to my first video if you want to see more about the depth or leave a comment for a new video. And here's the finished product. So mind you, it depends on the angle and the light I took, but that's basically it right there. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you want to see next. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below as well. Thank you all for watching today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Mike Bot.